Welcome in. Ready to negotiate. The signal Kansas lawmaker is giving this week, approving those incentives, attempting to make Kansas the home of the Chiefs and Royals, or both. With an indication from Governor Kelly, she intends to sign it. So what comes next? Fact Finder senior reporter Sean Logging explains. If signed by Governor Laura Kelly, a bipartisan plan enables talks to bring the Chiefs, Royals, or both to Kansas. To a large degree, they're under a time crunch, right? I mean, to design, acquire land, design a stadium like that, I say you snooze, you lose. Kansas Commerce Secretary David Tolan will be directed to develop the agreement between the teams and state. There's a one-year window, but that could be extended. If it comes together, it would also need the approval of the state's Legislative Coordinating Council, a group of House and Senate leadership. The incentive lawmakers approved Tuesday opens up hundreds of millions of dollars to fund the stadium, team practice facilities, and other infrastructure. The state's star bond program would cover up to 70 percent by issuing bonds to be paid back over 30 years. Hypothetically, if the Village West area of Kansas City, Kansas was selected, a district would be created around that area. And its state and potentially local sales tax dollars currently being generated and to come from future development would go to pay off the bonds. Also, state liquor tax dollars in that district, along with funds from sports betting and excess lottery revenue. Together, that brings in a stream of revenue that can finance up to about $1.5 billion in bonds. And that's not possible in other states without putting taxes on their citizens. However, academic studies and people who study public financing of stadiums find these projects don't deliver in the ways often promised. And still to be determined is if such a star bond district will generate enough money to pay off the bonds. Nothing is free. Um, the cannibalization, that's a trade-off of general fund dollars. Whatever those public services are being, gen are being financed through general fund dollars are now being allocated to the stadium. That was Sean Logging reporting this bill also makes changes to the state's Open Meetings and Open Records Act such that any agreement will be confidential through at least July of 2029. And if a project comes together in the future, additional bonds could be approved and issued beyond that initial amount. Also in the State House this week, Kansas lawmakers passed another version of a tax cut bill heading to the governor now. She says she will sign this one. It comes after she vetoed three other plans this year, citing concerns about the long-term costs. The bill includes property and income tax cuts. State tax on Social Security will also be eliminated. Well, the city of Bel Air releasing a long-awaited result of some underground testing as to what went wrong on the Woodlawn Reconstruction Project. So that's the goal. Tonight we have those results. Here's Fact Finder reporter Kale Chapman. Well, this is an embarrassment for the entire city. This shouldn't have happened, and uh, it's unfortunate, and we're trying to recover from it, but we want to recover from it and, and have a quote, good quality product for the citizens. Many in Bel Air frustrated as progress stalled on Woodlawn. Pretty irritating whenever there's just backup of traffic as well due to the construction and then loud noises with that construction as well. This process has taken way longer than we anticipated, the city anticipated, and so it's just disheartening. Last year, the new road began to buckle under the weight of vehicles, prompting a KDOT investigation and testing from the city to find out why. Now Belair has an answer, groundwater under the road. I mean, we could, we could mask over it. We could put the asphalt on there and it would look fine for a while, but, but it's going to deteriorate. And probably from what we've already seen, it probably wouldn't last a year. City engineers are working with the groundwater results to design a drainage system to stabilize woodlot, but it's going to take time. It may not even be this year. People who live in the area say they're happy a solution has been found, but they hope it's done sooner rather than later. It's a little disheartening because in the beginning, this project was supposed to be done I think almost a year ago now, that to think that we're going to do this for another year. But I guess, I mean, it's just part of it. I guess it's what you have to do. You want it done right so we're not doing this again here in another few years. In Bel Air, Kill Chapman, 12 News. Some experts say Bowen could now face some criminal consequences related to several air disasters. It's been under a deferred prosecution agreement stemming from crashes in 2018 and 19. The Justice Department says that it violated that when that door plug flew out of the plane in January. Boeing says it's been in compliance. Now a new allegation amplifying calls for prosecution. Amy Kiley reports. They throw all of their safety rubrics out the window. Some family members of Boeing victims are demanding the company face prosecution. Now signs are emerging they might get their wish after an explosive revelation tied to a Senate hearing yesterday. Whistleblower Sam Mohawk alleges Boeing hid substandard parts from the FAA, lost track of them, and likely installed them on planes. 
You need to make sure that every part that's ever manufactured on these airplanes, it's not a bogus part. Boeing says it's reviewing Mohawk's claims. It also says it has complied with a deferred prosecution agreement stemming from crashes in 2018 and 19. In it, Boeing effectively promises to do better. The chair of the Senate Investigation Subcommittee argues it has violated that agreement, and some experts agree. We've heard from whistleblower after whistleblower that there is almost this sweatshop mentality on the Boeing factory floors. Boeing CEO says the company is working to change, and he addressed victims' families yesterday. I would like to apologize on behalf of all of our Boeing associates spread throughout the world. For many who lost loved ones in those 2018 and 19 crashes, those words aren't enough. That safety, that number one priority of Boeing doesn't mean anything when 346 people died. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. A lawyer representing families who lost someone in the crashes sent a 32-page letter to the Department of Justice calling for Boeing to be fined $24 billion. The Justice Department says it will inform the court what actions, if any, it will take by July 7th. Definitely not um, legal, but honestly, it saved my life on several occasions. Shedding light on life-saving medication needed to keep millions alive, but one that's often unaffordable. That's next on Fact Finder Investigates.